Hello friends, Swaroop here. In this video presentation, I am going to demonstrate how to make use of operator overloading in regard to C sharp. So what I have got in this solution explorer, I have got two classes. First, my data. This is the class where I have declared two variables by the name int x and int y. I have got a default constructor. So this is my default constructor. And here I have got my parameterized constructor. Parameterized constructor. So what I'm doing basically, this is a default constructor because I will be in need of this constructor when I will be use the concept of operator overloading which you can see right over here. And I have got this parameter as constructor because I will be supplying data. Okay. So before I explain further, let's go and check out the other class which I have got is the program in which my main function is there. So in this particular line, if you see, I have gone for inheritance colon operator is representing inheritance of the class my data so this class i have inherited and both are in the same namespace operator overloading so once i inherit this particular class i can make use of parameterized constructor for sending argument so here i am not taking any input from the user which i could do easily with the help of command line argument also or console or write line as well so uh, here I'm sending the data 11 and 22. 11 is going to the variable which you can see over here as index and 22 is coming to this variable int y. So to differentiate between the formal argument and the actual argument, I have used uh, this keyword. So this dot x representing the class member variables and only x representing the parameter which is used in the constructor. So these two variables are being initialized with the help of this statement. And similarly, I am creating another reference variable by the name called D2, where I am passing these two arguments. Hence, another instance got created. So basically, in the memory, there are two instances available. Okay. Now, what I want is I want to go for adding of these two reference variables. Well, this is something which is directly not possible in case if operator overloading is not implemented. I repeat, if operator overloading is not implemented, you cannot go for reference addition of two reference reference variable that is not possible. Had it been a variable addition, that is fine. But when you are trying to add two reference variable, okay, it is not possible directly without using the operator overloading. And that's where the operator overloading comes. That means I'm using this plus for adding a new functionality apart from the mathematical operation of two variables. So what the new functionality I'm adding, I'm adding this particular operator a new definition that is it can also go for addition of two reference variables. So let's see how that is done. Here I'm implementing that since this will be invoked without the help of any, I mean to say for giving a call to this operator overloading, I don't need any object creation. So I will be using the concept of static. So that means I can directly give a call to this particular class without any object. Just like the way we do it in case of main function when we give a call to the main we don't make use of any object can directly access by the class name so that's the reason i have used the keyword static over here and the class name is my data which i have written for implementing operator overloading you have to use the keyword call operator the operator which you want to overload that particular operator you need to use and now over here i'm accepting these two these two reference variables d1 and d2 so these two reference variables belong to the class my data so that's the reason i have defined over here my data cal1 and my data class cal2 so this particular statement will symbolize these two concept so d1 will be represented by one by cal1 and d2 represented by cal2 here i'm going for the default constructor this is the reason why i have made use a default constructor if the default constructor will not be there then this particular statement will not get fired so once I have done that, inside my cal1, I have got both the instance of class member variable x and y. So I can write cal, so this is my 
third variable where I'm showing the summation. So cal dot x equals to cal one dot x plus cal two dot x. Similarly, cal dot y equals to cal one dot y plus cal two dot y. So this is what happening by virtue of operator overloading. And once I have added up, now I can return the reference variable. So at the end of the day, if someone asks you that what is the role of this particular program, you can say that with the help of operator overloading or with the help of the plus operator, I can go for addition of two reference variable. And that is what you can see right over here. And this particular value, which is the reference variable of the class, my data will come and get stored right over here. Okay, so that's the reason I've declared my data so that the return value can be stored over here. And once I have stored this one, I can now eventually go out for the result of X and Y separately. Okay, so 30, 33 plus 11 will be 44 and 44 plus 22 will be 66. So let's go and check out the result. And here is the result which you can see right in front. With the help of operator overloading, we have performed the sum of two reference variables. Okay. So I believe this particular program gave you the idea of how operator overloading is going to be implemented. So just wait for my next video. Until then, have a nice time.